Hey everybody, it's Ori from AstroWeb and I'm here to create this video to show you how to use the WPML uh, WordPress a plugin basically to enable your uh, either blog or WordPress site to use multi languages to have more than one language on the site. It's a very very nice plugin. Uh, it does cost money, I don't know, some kind of minimal fee, 20, 30, 40 dollars for license and um, just very very nice, you know, they did a really nice job. So we'll show you very quickly how to install it and then a few uh, ways of how to actually use it. Okay, So in this case, uh, just to show you how to install, we set up a new uh, plugin or are setting up a new plugin on one site and then we'll switch to another test site that actually has it installed and, and functioning. Okay, So very, very simply you go to, let's see, go to their website and obviously buy uh, the plugin. Uh, by the way, obviously you have a lot of documentation information here, so very, very nice thing. Let's see how much it costs now, um, just so we know. So there's a few other ones right here, multilingual CMS, $79, uh, lifetime, all that stuff. So basically get the plugin, uh, do research for it if you really need it, but we found it very, very useful, really nice plugin. So buy it. Um, the next thing you want to do is download the files, right? So what you're going to do is uh, download the files, unzip, and you get a folder right here, SitePress Multilingual CMS. Upload it to your uh, WP content slash plugins folder, and you see we uploaded it here, so uh, we don't need to you know spend extra time. So once you do that, you want to go to your uh, login to WordPress, and then go to the plugin section, and then scroll down till you see it. Okay. And right here we have WPML multilingual, and let's click on activate. Okay, so once you click on activate, you should have kind of like a quick setup screen, uh, and then you can kind of proceed from there. So we'll show you a quick one, and then we'll switch to the other site. Okay, and it says here WPML is a powerful plugin. Would you like to see a quick overview? Uh, this yes will just take you to the website. Okay, so let's go to. Uh, set it up. So it says here before you start, first one is um, a, before adding other languages, please specify the language that the current site is in. So in our case it's English. Click on next and then you can select your language. So let's say we select Chinese traditional, right, for the other one. Next. And obviously you can add more, a go back and change all the time. So this is just a first setup. You can always change that in the settings. Okay. Let's go here, see if I clicked on next. Um, okay, and that's it. Now you're on add a language switcher. So you have some settings here. Um, here you can change the order of the languages um, and just go through all of the settings. So here, this will kind of uh, automatically, if your uh, theme enables it, automatically uh, add a drop down to kind of show you right here. Let's show you this. Either you know, traditional or English. Uh, if your theme doesn't uh, uh, doesn't provide it, you can actually copy this code right here. It'll give you the instructions, put it in, or you can manually link it. Um, if it's a default theme, it should work, but uh, obviously check with your theme maker and figure it out. Pretty, pretty straightforward. Um, so you have some settings. Uh, really nothing to go over right now just for this quick setup, right? So. Let's go to the bottom, let's click on finish, okay, and we have it here. So now uh, on your left side navigation you have a few new new areas, so w under WPML, languages, theme, on and on me menu sync, right? So um, let's actually go to the other site, one of our test sites that we did for when we developed one website, and we'll show you a few things. So let's go to WPML, okay and we'll just go one by one. So now we're on languages. Obviously you can add more, change, uh, very interesting, and here's all your navs, right? Um, language URL format, you can have something such as a slash en or slash, you know, any anything you want. You can either do it by domain or subfolder, really interesting. Um, we probably wouldn't recommend this, this kind of dynamic URL. You should either do this different languages in direct, direct subdirectories or per domain. Um, but obviously it's up to you, right? So again, this is what we saw before about how the drop down, how you can actually select a menu. So in this case on our test site, what we did is we just added it manually, either click EN, right, 
or in the case of Chinese, you know, you can go back, right? So you can see the folder slash en and the main folder for Chinese as a default. Okay, so let's go down more. I don't think there's much more to really go over. Uh, default language, obviously the main language you want to always have default when you add a new page or uh, a change a post or stuff like that. Um, hide languages. Um, so re really for default, yeah, you can leave everything the same, but you want to check out the the um, all the settings and optimize it for yourself. Okay, let's go to theme. Okay, here. Um, so here you can specify kind of a which which themes. Uh, if you want to either manually write it, a, a translate your your posts and your uh, content, or if you actually want to use a uh, translation file .mo, right? So. Um, what we do, we don't use the MO, but a, a, what we do is we just create them through the admin. Uh, just having different language through the admin, but you can do it through an MO. Truthfully, I've never done it before. I, I'm not really sure, and it might be a little bit easier. Or most likely, it's easier for larger sites, but for simple sites, you know, that have t 10 or 20 pages, uh, it's probably easier on the, the site itself. So let's show you, uh, we want to show you how to actually create pages, posts, and widgets, and menus, and all that stuff, right? So here you can see we have a site um, translated both in tr it, the original language, or the default language is traditional Chinese, and the sub-language is English, right? So you can go through the pages, all that. So let's show you how to create, first of all, a new blog post page. So if you go to post right here, you can see that now we have a new kind of uh, top menu area which is you can see all the pages in you know each of the languages right so in this case by default because we said the defaults Chinese traditional English uh, and then all languages so you can see and, and go through there right so uh, now on on each of your uh, uh, post right here this this default post area you have a new column and it'll just show you the other language right because now we're in the English so it'll show you Taiwan's um, a, or sorry Chinese traditionals a, a kind of addition so what you can do if you already have an English page and you want to create the t Chinese traditional you will just click on the plus here right um, so if I click on plus it'll create the Chinese version and um, you can do one thing you can either create it from scratch or you can copy content from English and then change it around so let's click here and it'll just copy the the actual box itself so if you want to use the same images or stuff like that so uh, basically what you want to do is just create your content obviously let's pretend this is in Chinese and just do your regular post everything and just save it or you know preview or publish right so let me show you one more one more way just want to make sure this is clear for posts okay so let's say we're adding a new page that doesn't exist in, in Chinese or English right so I would click on add new and let's set up a test test one and then this is content in uh, Chinese okay and so now let's say I want to publish it okay you can see language of the post you can select which one it is but by default we want the Chinese in this case to, to be the default right I'm gonna click on publish and now I want to create let's say equivalent English page so I can go here and under the translate yourself I can go and click on translate into English that plus sign and then English English test test this is a test Okay, and then just publish it, and that's it. So we created one version in, in Chinese, one version in English, and you can see the URL, the English, because it's not the default uh, subdirectory. We have slash en in our page. If we go and want to edit again the Chinese, you can just go from here, click on the edit button, and you can see here slash this slash the test, right? So that's it. So if we go to post we can basically see it here now we're under Chinese here's the post I can either edit the the English one or I can just go here and see what English ones they have here this is it and then I can edit the other way so very very simple uh, now if I want to add a new page unlike posts um, you know which is different than posts it's basically the same exact process right I have my menu here um, 
I would create a new one and the same exact everything, right? So let's say I'm editing this Chinese page, I would just click to edit the English or add a new one. Very, very simple, the exact same thing, but obviously sometimes you need posts, blog posts uh, under your WordPress site and sometimes you need pages such as a contact or informational page, okay? So now I want to show you just two other things and, and we'll kind of wrap it up, okay? So number one, uh, in this site for example, we have a top menu, right? So if I want to change this menu and if your theme uses it, you'd want to change your menu. So if you go to appearance and menus, if you've set it up and your theme supports it, again with the plugin you'll have menus, Chinese and English, and you'll have you know different menus that you may or may not have created, right? So basically very, very simple. Um, the, the simple menus you can just create and go and create your, you see, Chinese menus and your English ones, right? So let's say I'm under, and let me show you an example. Let's say we want to change up this R products, and obviously your code has to support it. So under R products, we would go to products right here, menu, and uh, don't remember, don't forget that you're in the Chinese currently. So this is your list in Chinese, you know, page, page, page. Obviously, we added them from the, the number of pages on the left here. And if you want to change up the English versions, let's leave this page. Make sure we're on products, right? Argo Hytos, Eaton, all that stuff. Argo Hytos, Eaton. So you can see everything right here. So very, very simple. Um, WPML plugin just makes it really simple. Adds these few language tabs, and basically everything stays the same. You see a few more things added here. Um, so the same thing goes with your, let's see here, with your widgets. Okay, now um, if I'm on my About Us, here's my custom widget, and you can just change your information here, right? So now we have Chinese and we have all that. Um, let me see what else we may be missing. Okay, menus we did, and... Um, Let's see one more thing about the sync, okay? If I remember correctly. So WP menu sync. So now that we wanted to, to change some menus, we can automatically sync and uh, kind of import to make sure that both the, the both languages in this case have the English and Chinese uh, uh, versions, right? So you just click on sync and it would kind of help you uh, make sure which pages do or do not have translations and then you would set them up. Um, so let's see here, string translation, same thing goes. So let's see if I have, um, this, this is a good example. Okay, this is the last thing. So um, in this case, let's go to, let's say widgets. And I, I didn't explain this before. So now we have our widgets, for example. Let's say we have our header, header uh, content. So uh, when you go to widgets here, it basically uses your default um, language. So right now we're pretty much setting up everything under um, the Chinese, right? So if I'm if I want to set up my head contact, this code basically is um, let's see if I remember correctly is basically this section, right? So if I want to change this, and obviously on on a, when I'm on my default, the the widget area is just going to control only the Chinese pages. So now if I want to control the English pages for this widget, right, this widget section, right, I'm on widgets, then what I would do is I would go to WPML, string translation, find the widgets you see here, or I can actually, um, you know, a, a filter down right here, I'd find the widgets and I'd want to edit it. So Let's go see, click on translations, and now you see under the English, I can define all the English page ones, and obviously I would let them scroll to the Chinese version. So you can, so uh, unlike pages and posts, string translation right here lets you change the widgets. I think that's one big, a bigger thing that kind of needs to be known. Um, and that's it. If you change it, you save it, then all the English page, you know, widgets will be changed. Um, that's that's basically that's pretty uh, pretty much a, a good intro to uh, WPML. There's many more things. Obviously, the .mo files is interesting, and we'll probably get into it in not the near future, but kind of more far future. Um, that's basically it. So, if you have any questions, please comment on our blog or our YouTube. Uh, 
uh, you know, page and please ask us any questions. We'll be happy to help if we can and if we can't, we'll try very hard to actually find a solution for you. Um, let me know if you have any questions again. Thank you very much for listening to this video and would appreciate any and all feedback. Thank you so much.